Hello and welcome you're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is Market Today, a show where we'll help you understand the closing action on the D Street starting from the benchmark index moves to the sectoral action and all the stocks that are moving in trade today. Also, our focus will be on the Adani Group stocks because as we speak, the matter is being taken up by the Supreme Court, the Adani Hindenburg Rao and the case uh, is being heard. Uh, we are awaiting any kind of uh, information, order, verdict and any observations if the court really makes on the two matters that are being heard in court today and we will continue to focus on how should you as investors be approaching the Adani group stocks amid these hearings and uh, what are the things uh, that you should keep in mind as well but first up a quick check on how the markets are doing at this point in time well the markets have picked up pace uh, looking better than the morning half of course uh, if you look at the nifty right now it's up by 21 odd points uh, at 18,318 the sensex is back above the six 62,000 mark again, 140 points of an upside, almost a quarter percent surge for the Sensex as well. What's really helping the markets really inch higher, some of the stocks from the auto basket, of course, Aisha Motors is the top gainer. Right after stellar numbers, the stock has been on an upward trend. 6.5% right now. It's maintaining its uh, you know, gains right from the morning trade. M&M following suit, 2% higher. Indusind Bank continuing with its upward run as well. So the autos, banks, financials, uh, these are moving in trade today. Axis Bank, Tata Motors, the other movers right now. The FMCG stocks also. HOL moving higher. So you do have uh, Hero Moto, HDFC Bank, SBI. So the banks, financials, autos and FMCG. These are the pockets that are definitely supporting the market sentiment. On the flip side, if you see, the metals are really dragging the sentiments. Uh, Hindalco down by almost 4 odd percent. BPCL, Power Grid, these stocks are also down by almost 3% uh, in trade. NTPC, Ultra Tech Cement. Data Steel as well. Let's also look at the Adani group of stocks. How are they also moving in trade? Let's look at Adani Enterprises. Remember yesterday the stock was up by 5.5% reacting to the news flows that the group may be now mulling uh, to raise uh, fresh funds going forward from here. That led Adani Enterprises jumping in trade yesterday but today uh, there's definitely pressure coming in and the pressure is also following the MSCI index changes for sure for two of the group stocks and the flagship stock is also uh, seeing some dips apart from this let's look at the other stocks as well um, Adani Transmission, Adani Total Gas these are the two stocks that have immediately got impacted from the MSCI index and you can actually see these two stocks down in the lower circuit today let's welcome our guest on the show Mr. Avinash Gorakshaka really joins in he's uh, the head of research from uh, Profit Mart Securities welcome sir and thank you so much for taking uh, the time out for this discussion first up your comment on the markets and uh, how are you advising investors to uh, really approach the equity and the movement right now in the markets yeah I think uh, good afternoon Sakshi I think uh, markets have been fairly buoyant uh, considering the fact that a lot of FI liquidity has entered the markets and I think uh, markets are definitely looking forward for the fact that inflation which was a major uh, issue you know in the last few months there are clear signs that inflations could peak out not only in India but in US and I think that is the main driving factor which is responsible for the buoyancy in the market. Uh, our sense is that in the next uh, you know the couple of meetings for both the Fed and the, the RBI meet, I think if interest rates are paused then this could be taken as a big positive surprise. Uh, we believe that the monsoons also if they are possibly you know uh, properly dispersed in this current year then I think it could further fuel the market rally. Uh, however, in the near term, you know, markets would be volatile because as everyone is aware, uh, tomorrow we get the Karnataka state election results and I think yeah. there could be some impact in the coming week, uh, you know, following the result which comes uh, following uh, what finally emerges in Karnataka. Right. Uh, so that, um, you know, for sure is something that the investors will keep an eye out on. But uh, the other pocket that I've been talking on is the Adani group of stocks. They have been in focus. Several news flows really impacting an everyday movement on Adani group stocks. Uh, um, first up, on the developments that we actually saw yesterday and day before. On the one hand, Adani Enterprises, uh, the board is going to be meeting tomorrow uh, to consider a proposal of uh, raising of funds. This comes right after the 20,000 crore rupees uh, FPO was really withdrawn uh, earlier in this year as well. How do you really see this announcement from the Adani group? And uh, do you think that any of these plans could again be impacted by what comes out today at the Supreme Court hearing? Uh, I think, Sakshi, my guess is that, uh, you know, the Supreme Court hearing could possibly put all the 
concerns uh, to once and for all. Uh, however, my sense is that you know the fundraising exercise actually shows the group's confidence in raising money after the Hindenburg issue happened, uh, you know, of, uh, quite some time back. More importantly, uh, my sense is that this issue could be largely for the qualified institutional investors. They may not look at a retail offering. So I think clearly the, this could be an offering for select HNIs as well as uh, you know qualified institutional investors. The retail piece may not be coming as of now. But yes, if the money raised is significantly, uh, you know, at reasonably good uh, valuations, then I think the market should obviously give this a thumbs up because that means that the management is very confident and aggressive, you know, on their growth plans, which actually had suffered a setback in the last, you know, uh, last few months. So I think net net, let's wait and watch for the Hindenburg, uh, you know, Supreme Court hearing. But I think possibly we could get to hear any favorable, you know, kind of verdict, and that possibly is the reason for the buoyancy in the Adani Group stocks. Okay, so there is a likelihood of uh, favorable announcements to come in from the court this time around. But just for the benefit of all our viewers, let me apprise you with what exactly are we expecting from the court today. Remember the Hindenburg research report on Adani group of stocks that came in in January 2023. Uh, after that, we've seen the Supreme Court of India constitute an expert panel that is headed by former Apex Court Judge Justice A.M. Sapre for the assessment of the extent uh, regulatory framework for investigation uh, into the allegations that were labeled against the Adani group. Now, the six-member panel was then asked to assess how to protect consumers' interest in a better way if regulatory lapses did exist and the broader impact also. Now, after uh, we've also heard that uh, the, there has been a submission of a report by this six-member expert panel um, on the Hindenburg research report uh, in a sealed cover. And that the Supreme Court is definitely going to look at and perhaps make an observation on what they think about the findings of this uh, report ma made by or submitted by the six-member panel. Um, now, this uh, member panel was uh, uh, supposed to be submitting uh, the report on 8th of May. And after that, the matter got listed for hearing today uh, before Chief Justice of India, uh, D.B. Uh, Chandrachur. However, right ahead of Supreme Court hearing, we did see Adani shares also moving tepid. Uh, you know, awaiting the hearing, uh, two of the Adani group stocks, the total gas and transmission, did, did get locked uh, in the lower circuit um, because of the MSCI group of changes as well. So that's exactly uh, that we are awaiting. The other matter that the Supreme Court is going to be hearing is on SEBI's plea on giving it an extension of six months to really probe and come out with the findings as well. So these two matters will be before the Supreme Court and we are awaiting um, any kind of decision by the Supreme Court, observations or verdict on all of this as well. Uh, the other matter, Mr. Gorak Shakar, that I was just pointing out, just yesterday we did see the MSCI changes, two of the stocks being removed from this index as well. How big an impact is this likely to have on the entire group stocks going forward from here? I think my guess is that, uh, you know, whatever price damage uh, you know, had to happen for the Adani group stocks has already happened. The market has factored in almost all the negatives in the price and now the market will focus again on the fundamentals, on the growth uh, kind of plans of all these companies. Uh, clearly, funding was a very major component for most of the Adani group companies and I now, uh, with the announcement that Adani Transmission, Adani Enterprises are planning to raise funds, this mm. clearly shows that, you know, growth plans are now again coming back. Uh, hopefully, if the money is raised quickly, and I think from institutional large investors, then I think that would give a lot of comfort to the overall, you know, valuations of these companies, and you know, make the market more confident on this group going forward. Hmm, okay. Uh, you know, when we talk about these Adani Group stocks, Mr. Gorak Shakar, they have definitely recovered from their February lows, but are still about 49% down from their January 24th level. The day we actually saw US-based short seller Hindenburg Research made se severe allegations against the group and the stocks really went into a free fall and continued thereafter as well. Uh, despite this recovery, do you still believe the valuations still uh, have an upside because that was one of the major concerns that these stocks have actually moved up in a very short span of time as well. So despite this kind of a recovery, do we still see an upside? Yeah, I think clearly, uh, if you talk about valuations, I think clearly, uh, you know, Adani Ports, uh, Adani Wilmer, these companies have definitely corrected sharply and now valuations are definitely looking attractive. As far as the other group companies like Adani, uh, you know, Total Gas, Adani Transmission, I would believe that, you know, valuations had become extremely uh, frothy and very expensive, you know, sometime in January. So I think a correction was expected anyway. 
today i would believe that even from a risk reward point of view adani ports adani wilmer definitely offers a decent risk reward maybe adani total gas and transmission still would be market performers because the valuations have not corrected significantly i think we still feel that these two companies are slightly you know priced at a premium to the market compared to adani ports and adani wilmer so i think selectively you know investors would be looking at specific companies in the group so that you know they could make a decent amount of risk reward from these guys Hmm. Uh, you know, when we are talking about the hearing today, of course, the report by the six-member uh, panel was already submitted on 8th of May. But the developments that have just come two days before, will the Supreme Court really be looking into this? Because we saw that the Mauritius uh, government and financial services minister right there really gave favorable comments uh, when it comes to the Adani Group stocks. They refuted the allegations that were made by Hindenburg uh, on uh, the shell companies of Adani that actually exist in the island nation. And they said that none of such companies or duplicate companies do exist with the name of Adani right there. So do you think these favorable comments will have anything uh, that the Supreme Court will also watch out for today? No, definitely. I think, uh, you know, the comments coming from the Mauritius government are definitely reassuring. I think clearly it put down uh, all the rumors and the news flows that uh, some sort of offshore uh, shell companies were operating in Mauritius. So I think this clear statement from the Mauritius government gives a lot of comfort uh, you know, to the Adani group because uh, clearly their point becomes more stronger in the Supreme Court. So my sense is that, uh, you know, this will definitely be looking be a positive factor which will play in the overall, you know, judgment today. So I think mm. it's definitely a positive kind of news flow, at least, uh, you know, in the near term. Right. Uh, Mr. Gaurak Shakar, what did you read through in the numbers that have been posted in this quarter by the Adani Group uh, companies? Do they fundamentally really support the kind of move that we had seen in the stocks as well? And, uh, you know, post the earnings, does it give really fresh confidence to the investors on, if not all, some of the stocks? Yeah, I think a lot of price damage actually has happened in the mm -hmm. Adani Group stocks and a lot of retail investors have been caught very badly. So I think, you know, in stocks like Adani Total Gas, which was trading at 3,000 rupees, is now a three-digit share. Uh, Adani Transmission also, there's been a very significant price depreciation. As far as Adani Ports is also concerned, there was a lot of sell-off, but there has been some value buying here. Adani uh, Wilmer has come out with a poor set of 2-4 numbers, but I think that was on expected lines. So my sense is that, you know, this group will now consolidate, uh, focus more on uh, their balance sheets, reduction of pledges, and obviously try to, uh, you know, uh, do a little bit more on the capital allocation strategy, which was largely in favor of debt. So I think going forward, it's going to take a long time. But yes, I think uh, if the Supreme Court judgment becomes uh, gets positive for the Adani group, that will mm. definitely be a kind of a differentiator, at least in the near term, for all the Adani group companies. Got that. Um, as an alert to all our viewers, the Adani Hindenburg case uh, hearing has started in the Supreme Court. So very, very shortly, we are awaiting any kind of observations and decisions that the Supreme Court really makes. We will also connect with our reporter who is uh, uh, at the court and is looking at the observations. As soon as they come in, we will definitely take those up as well. Uh, meanwhile, we'll come back and circle back to the Adani Group case also, Mr. Gaurak Shakar. But otherwise, overall, the market setup. Uh, uh, where else, apart from the Adani Group, should investors be really keeping their eye out on? Um, you know, we have seen the most of the earnings really play out. Uh, some of them are already priced into the stock as well. Uh, you know, what next for the markets and how next should one really strategize their uh, investments and approach in the markets? So I think uh, the earnings season this time, Sakshi, has been uh, much better than what the uh, street expectations were. And I think noticeable sectors which have done really well uh, include, uh, you know, sectors like auto, automotive uh, components, capital goods, uh, you know, even real estate companies, cement companies. And I think the markets are definitely looking forward for a better set of earnings numbers for the first quarter of FY24, especially sectors like cement where raw metal prices have come down, uh, demand has also picked up. And my sense is that, you know, sectors like defense, railways, I think these are also sectors where a lot of uh, latent demand is going to come in the next three to six months. So I think uh, markets are now looking at positive, uh, you know, near term, you know, what happens on the international uh, macro side, how is inflation going to be uh, peaking out, because this is going to be the single most factor which will be, uh, will, be will re rate the market. Already the markets are getting a hint that after uh, the latest Fed uh, in rate hike, uh, the next rate hike may not come for a very long time. And most importantly, if the monsoons are good, the monsoon would be the near term trigger for the Indian markets. If monsoons are normal, then I think that could be a further re rating factor. Of course, uh, the elections are going to be uh, there in this year. So those uh, factors will also play out. But I think overall, the monsoon factor is now going to be important after the earnings season are over.
That's very important. The monsoon factor will be important trigger for the markets and the way the markets take uh, their next uh, way forward from here on as well. Uh, but you know, I wanted to ask you about uh, several pockets. We did see that the auto stocks were uh, you know up and about today, of course, led by another momentum in uh, earnings, and that is Aisha Motors that came out with good earnings, and we saw the stock really inching higher by eight odd percent on an intraday level. Also, right now about six and a half percent maintaining at that level. Uh, from the auto basket, is there anything that is looking interesting to you and do you really believe you know all the things that were bothering the auto sector be it the covid related pandemic related issues that they were facing the semiconductor related issues the supply the raw material prices are all of them now uh, slowly going on to the back burner is it the right time to start you know nibbling some of the auto stocks now yeah i think sakshi today i was reading a some note where they were saying that automotive sales have now crossed the pre covid kind of uh, sales so I think after a very long time, uh, you know, the sector is now into uh, a lot of buzzing activity, apart from the fact that a lot of new product launches are expected in the current financial year. Most importantly, you know, sectors like commercial vehicles and passenger cars, I think should be definitely be looked upon very closely. I think Maruti Suzuki or Tata Motors, you know, which obviously is going to have its uh, board meeting today for declaring a dividend after a long time, could be interesting bets, you know, considering that there's a lot of headroom for growth in both these companies. Hmm, okay. And, uh, you know, on the IT pack, of course, this is one space where uh, nobody wanted to really touch this space amid all the fiasco that we actually saw in the IT pack. But post the earnings, have things started to stabilize a bit? Uh, is it the right time for someone to uh, look at IT who's looking from a long term perspective to continue uh, with the strength of accumulating some of the stocks? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Clearly, the IT companies have done, uh, you know, obviously on historical basis, that is FY23 numbers, they've done a steady performance. But I think going forward, uh, the guidances which have been given by large players like Infosys, HCL Tech, have been quite, you know, uh, tipped, you know, single digit growth. So I think investors who want to take a contract call and want to invest money can obviously allocate little amount of money in these frontline companies because I believe that over the next six to eight months, once there's a kind of a tail room improvement in US and Europe, there could be a big bounce back. In fact, we saw very good numbers from Intellect Design and today the stock was in limelight. So I think overall improvements would come in, but I think you need to give a slightly longer term time frame for your investments here. Hmm, okay, understood that as well. Uh, what is really bothering the metal pack? Uh, this, there's been a sharp fall in today's trading action. We've also been the stock really trading volatile with most of the days uh, seeing some cuts as well. Is there, is there something structural that is, uh, you know, continuing to turn negative for the metal pack? And is this a space where you would avoid? Yeah, I think we have been always uh, advocating on your channel that metal companies will definitely find the next couple of quarters a little more challenging because you know globally metal prices continue to be weak. Uh, today there were reports that aluminum prices have softened. Again, uh, China has not entered the metal market in a big way. So I would believe that you know despite the fact that infrastructure development in India would obviously drive domestic demand for steel, the global metal prices have yet not improved. So I think over the next six to eight months, you know, you could probably find these companies remaining lackluster and I think earnings growth is going to be missing. So I think it's better to wait and watch for some time. But yes, metal companies would prefer, would do well only once we get some global tailwind, especially about China entering the metal market. Hmm, okay, so that's as far as the metals is concerned. Another pocket that I wanted your view on is the broader markets, especially the small cap space. In the recent Amphi data, what we did witness is uh, that uh, the flows were stronger in the small caps vis-a-vis -vis the large caps as well. Um, uh, the FIIs pickup in the small caps has also increased over the recent times. Is this a space that you're also watching out very keenly? Is this a time that you would advise investors to start uh, you know, uh, increasing their exposure to small caps? Yeah, I think Sachi, uh, clearly, you know, large caps have become slightly fair to expensive. And I think now most of the investors, the smart investors are looking at small cap and mid caps, largely because, you know, here the alpha uh, creation opportunity is significantly better than, you know, large caps. And I think uh, mid caps had been beaten down very badly. Their valuations had also come off, uh, up, you know, after touching their peak levels. So I think valuations have also been comforting. There is some valuation catch up happening. At the same time, most of the companies have shown a very strong UFO number and plus a very strong FY24 business outlook. So I think it's going to be a pick and choose here. But yes, this uh, you know this space is going to be very interesting, provided you know one approaches a stock specific approach. 
Okay, understood that too. Um, you know, which are the top stocks that are you are keeping on your radar right now where you believe that for FI24 investors can definitely keep these stocks on their radar, that whether or not the stock markets really give you handsome returns, these particular stocks could actually help you generate alpha. Yeah, I think uh, two companies where we are positive is one is uh, Orient Cement, which is a CK Birla Group company. Uh, it's got a capacity of 8.5 million tons and uh, very soon it will be increasing it to 11 million tons. Uh, we believe that this company has got a very large presence in uh, you know three states, Karnataka, Telangana and Maharashtra. And I think definitely this company should do well. The con call commentary was also very positive. Uh, the other stock is VIP Industries. You know, this is a play on the uh, hospitality theme. And I think the company came out with very strong set of numbers. Our sense is that the next 12 to 15 months, you know, hopefully if the hospitality and the travel business continues to show strong trends, then VIP is definitely going to benefit significantly. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Gorakshaka, for being with us on the show and discussing with us various pockets of importance and the way investors should be moving as far as their investments are concerned in equities. We'll take a short break, come back and take on the coverage on the uh, Supreme Court hearing on the Adani Hindenburg case. And amidst that, what should be your own strategy on the Adani group of stocks as well? Uh, in fact, we are getting some information coming in as far as uh, the Adani group um, hearing is concerned the information that we are getting is that uh, uh, the supreme court hearing matter uh, supreme court is hearing the matter on the appointed panel uh, in fact uh, the panel has submitted the report in a sealed cover the bench headed by chief justice of india dy chandrachur is hearing the plea in fact solicitor general has said that we are seeking extension of time we need six months more that's a uh, uh, the comments made by the Solicitor General as well. Also, uh, the other information that's coming in is that I'm not reading anything and probe is required to be done. Suspicious transactions need to be probed and we need six months more to reach to a conclusion. I think these are the statements that are being read uh, by the Supreme Court judges as far as the report that has been submitted by the six-member panel. And uh, also on uh, SEBI, panel, uh, SEBI plea as well, where they have requested for an extension of six months too. Now, Solicitor General for SEBI has said this, that, um, you know, within the court, uh, the statements that have been submitted by the Solicitor General for SEBI are that uh, wherever we have said suspicious transactions, it's according to the report. We are not saying ourselves that the transactions are suspicious. So those are the statements that are coming on uh, from the Solicitor General for SEBI. Um, Mr. Gorakshakar, what do you read of the statements that have been made by Solicitor General? Uh, you know, wherever we have said suspicious transactions, uh, it's according to the report. We are not saying this ourselves, that the transactions are suspicious. That's what the Solicitor General has said. No, I think, uh, Sakshi, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, suspicious transactions are uh, definitely arouse a little bit of concern you know uh, from the investor as well as from the market side but my sense is that unless we get some full clarity on what the supreme court judgment is i think it's very difficult to take a short term call on this uh, you know on the adani group as of now i would believe the market should also await for full clarity and then obviously you could see the impact of that on the stock prices in the coming few weeks Okay, and uh, you know what we are understanding is that SEBI has clearly asked that, you know, and said in the court that all we need is more time right now. Uh, we are still awaiting the Supreme Court order on whether this extension has been allowed or not. Uh, but in case this is allowed, will this be a big breather for uh, the Adani group too? No, I think uh, my guess is, you know, a six-month extension was more or less on expected line, Sakshi. So I think it doesn't give any... Uh, major kind of advantage or positive to the Adani group. In fact, they were wanting this judgment to come out upfront so that all of uh, all the investors are very clearly yeah. aware of the realities. So that means the uh, that uh, you know the uncertainty and the period of volatility may continue for the next six months in case the order comes in on that. Yeah, I think it would. Uh, see, as long as the judgment mm. does not come full and final, there would be volatility and there would be a little bit of uh, wide swings in this uh, in the Adani group stocks. 
Okay, understood that as well. Let's quickly look at how just two minutes remaining for the markets to shut. Let's look at how the Adani Group stocks are really reacting to these comments as well. Of course, nine of the ten Adani Group stocks have been trading in the red zone right from the morning trade. Several of the news flows that have been impacting the MSCI uh, index changes that impacted Adani Transmission and Adani Total Gas as well. And uh, the um, other stocks also. Let's look at these stocks uh, first uh, for all our viewers. Uh, the Adani Group stocks. Let's um, start off with Adani Enterprises. Pull up the rest of the stocks as well. Adani Transmission. Um, yeah, so Adani Enterprises is closing the day almost a day, almost a percent lower at 1965, almost at the day's low. Adani Transmission has pulled off from the day's low, it's now ending the day at 3.08%. Adani Total Gas, let's look at that stock as well. Um, 819, 4% down in trade, slightly weaker uh, than the Adani transmission, but off the lower circuit for sure. Adani Green is down by almost 2% as well. Let's look at Adani Power, Wilmar, um, and let's also look at the other group stocks like ACC, Ambuja as well. So Ports is down by 1.5%. Let's look at Power, Wilmar. Um, all of those stocks too, 1% uh, down for Adani Power at 240 uh, in today's trading action. Let's look at uh, Wilmar as well, it's trading down by 0.7%. Nothing has really changed materially as far as these comments have come in uh, from uh, the Supreme Court as of now. Ambuja Simmons trading down by half odd percent. That's another stock that's been down in trade. Um, ACC, perhaps the only stock. Uh, that's uh, trading up and has closed the day up uh, almost a percent higher in today's trading session as well. Uh, the Solicitor General for SEBI has also said that considering that many contours are outside the jurisdiction, we need a minimum of six months. That is what they have said. This is the minimum required time of six months. Um, uh, Prashant Bhushan is there and uh, the statements coming in from Prashant Bhushan say uh, that SEBI was probing some of the transactions since 2016 as well. But when we talk about uh, SEBI, uh, they have said that we are not going to be commenting on any of the transactions. We are not saying that the transactions are suspicious wherever they have mentioned so. So they have not really taken on this. We also have Mr. Vineet Bolinshkar joining right in. Um, Vineet, I do know that we've done several shows on Adani Group stocks. Uh, you know, we, you also have been bullish on most of the stocks as well. You were one of the first uh, analysts. In fact, I remember I speaking too when we did see the recovery process for most of these stocks starting after that free fall. And you did tell me that some of the stocks are looking attractive at these uh, valuations as well. And that was the correct time for you to actually go ahead and also look at or advise investing in those stocks. We are hearing the Supreme Court statements right now. Some of them have already come out. Solicitor General for SEBI um, has said that they need more time to investigate. The statement that uh, has also come out is that wherever we have said uh, suspicious transactions, it's according to the report and we are not saying that ourselves that the uh, transactions are suspicious. And all SEBI has asked for is an extension of six months because most of uh, the contours are lie outside of the jurisdiction as well. Amid the Supreme Court hearing, how would you, you really approach the Adani Group stocks now? Vineet, if you could hear me. I can't hear anything. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to you, um, Vineet, uh, with all of that. Uh, let's one more uh, statement update that has come in. Uh, petitioners oppose the grant of six months additional time to SEBI. Of course, the opposition continues to take place. And Avinash, you've been maintaining that as soon as the decisions come out, that would actually give more clarity uh, for the investors as well. And perhaps that would build on more investors' confidence once the things are done and dusted. But SEBI continuously maintaining that six months is what they need as well. Uh, Vineet, if you can hear me, uh, we've been talking about the Supreme Court hearing statements coming about as well. Um, as far as uh, the hearing on the Adani Hindenburg case is concerned, two cases up for uh, hearing. One is the SEBI plea on the extension of six months. And the other, the observations that are being made uh, by the uh, court as far as the sealed, uh, the report submitted in a sealed cover is concerned. Your own thoughts on how would these developments really impact Adani Group stocks going forward? 
investors you know investor protection is very important and uh, investors should wait a while on this uh, sit report that comes so if sebi has asked for 6 months of time period i think investors should wait for this uh, judgment to come before venturing into buying these stocks hmm. because uh, you know it can go either way so uh, you know prevention better than cure and uh, better to be safe than to be sorry but having said that we do believe that the businesses of adani are very very strong and this 6 month uh, tenure which is there is going to help the company to uh, shore up its uh, asset quality uh, the balance sheet strength will improve uh, leverage will come down and you know a lot of the existing projects will be focused on completions of cash flow position of the company will also be better so i believe that this 6 month tenure which is uh, which you should uh, just track the company for a, from a process of execution and then venture out into these companies only when and uh, once this uh, judgment is out because it will have a significant impact on the corporate governance having said that for the dead devils who would like to buy into this uh, mayhem i believe that two stocks which offer a lot of value today are adani uh, ports and uh, adani total gas we believe these shares are significantly underpriced they have strong growth parameters trajectories in place and uh, uh, their uh, you know large incumbents in their own uh, specific domains right so right in fact we need you know we're getting we're getting a very big statement coming in uh, the chief justice of india to solicitor general has said extending the time by 6 months may be too much extending the times by 6 months may be too much the time that has been asked by sebi uh, cji has said that this may be too much so do you think there is uh, an option uh, that sebi may not actually get what they have asked but uh, the extension for a little time perhaps not much yeah i'm sure that sebi would be uh, provided a, a little leeway in terms of finding the report i guess you know if the entire report was given 2 months asking for a 6 month extension is a you know giving them a extensively long rope i think another month or two month of extension could quite be a possibility okay abhinash your comments you know another very big statement that is come in uh, chief justice of india has said um, uh, chief justice of india vinith has said that we will place the matter on august 15th now the matter has been placed for august 15th now and the chief justice of india has said complete the investigation till then that has what has come in right now from the court we will place the matter on august 15 and complete the investigation uh, till then we are sitting on 12th of may right now vinith till august 15th so it's just about yeah, a 3 so months extension yeah so it is so it's more than 2 uh, months uh, which i was suggesting so it's an adequate timeline that has been provided and i think 3 months is a very reasonable period to complete the investigation that's true so the chief justice of india has said there has to be some alacrity uh, and has said that there is no seal cover that has been given to us okay so the six member panel that was supposed to have given the uh, report to uh, the supreme court on that the chief justice of india has said that there is no sealed cover that has been given to us there were only reports so far that we were hearing media reports also suggesting that perhaps a report has been submitted in a sealed cover the chief justice of india has said there is no sealed cover that has been given to us and also again um uh, prashant bhushan has said um, on the matter that uh, sebi should disclose what all they have investigated so far uh so perhaps uh, you know they were instructed in march sebi was instructed back in march to start the uh, investigation into the case whether there are any lapses or as far as the leg- regulatory issues are concerned um any developments so far they have uh, put prashant bhushan has asked that sebi should be disclosing that and chief justice of india has also said that ask them to disclose at this point in time an investigation is under way won't be proper we won't give them 6 months but just 3 months so 3 months of an extension has been given avinash your own comments uh, not 6 months chief justice of india has said 6 months is asking too much till august 15 the matter will be placed now on august 15 and then um, they have sebi has been instructed to complete the investigation till then your comments in next 3 months the final verdict comes out then i think it should definitely Uh, give sort of some sort of clarity to this entire kind of issue uh, 
uh, overall our sense is that you know the adani group companies also have publicly mentioned that they are awaiting the report very keenly because there's nothing wrong done from their part so mm-hmm. i would believe that uh, you know 3 months is definitely not a long time period uh, probably in the end of the uh, next 3 months we could see a final decision coming on this issue so net net i think we'll have to wait and watch till that time uh, as of now i think the matter seems to be completely status quo okay but uh, what would you advise investors to do right now i mean like wait for three more months before taking any fresh positions in the adani group stocks look at any of the dips that are coming in you've been talking about two of the stocks that are your favorite vinith believes that you know till the time decision comes uh, fresh investments is likely to be uh, should be avoided by fresh investors your own take avinash yeah i think uh, whoever wants to put money on the adani group stocks has to be a contra investor who can take the Uh, extra risk in his portfolio because these are very volatile companies so i think you know if the risk appetite is high from the investor side then i can look at companies like adani ports adani wilmer our sense is that we basically are just commenting on the fundamentals of the business both these companies are generating a lot of cash they have good strong hard assets and i think uh, you know the long term uh, kind of outlook for both these companies looks promising so i think you know obviously what happens in the case what judgment comes out these are things which are completely out of the purview of fundamental investing so i think investors who can mm. take the risk and can take a proactive call even before the results of this case come out can definitely look at accumulating both these companies got that we need your own thoughts on the developments that we've been seeing mm-hmm. over the last two three sessions uh, also uh, we did see that you know mauritius government really giving in some favorable comments as far as adani group is concerned then we also saw adani enterprises talking about uh, fresh fund raise after the 20000 crore rupees fpo was withdrawn uh, now this could be another test or a litmus test to test the investors confidence at this stage uh, now the supreme court's verdict coming in on uh, just a 3 months extension because 6 months would be too much so uh, which you say is a uh, definitely positive at this point in time uh, your own thoughts the way investors should be reading into all these developments all of those investors who already have their exposure in the adani group stocks so you know uh investors who have exposure to the adani stocks for them it is a quite a positive that you know no mauritian entity has been found which is not disclosed second thing is that you know we are seeing the company consolidate position uh, they are paying back debt uh, and you know they are ex- they are focusing on execution so that the quality of the balance sheet improves uh, growth capital as i said is always a constraint given the fact that you know so many clouds hang nobody is ready to lend them money and the fact that in spite of all these efforts the company is going ahead with uh, you know its plans to raise funds leads credence to the fact that the company is fairly confident of its own business model and uh, they believe that you know they should not let these hindrances which have been posed by indenberg uh be a kind of a distraction to them so the mm-hmm. business as usual is going on and that is a signal that they are giving to investors and that i think for existing investors is a, a very very welcome sign and they mm-hmm. should continue to hold on to their stocks because we believe that the valuations are very cheap which would be your own preferred stocks at this stage as far as the adani group uh, is concerned because we've seen the earnings also come about uh, um, anything that you have really kept on top of your radar so we like uh, adani uh, total gas we like uh, adani ports adani uh, adani enterprises also very good uh, incubator and we also like ambuja and acc which are uh, absolutely uh, you know pecking order stocks so these five are the ones with that we like so right. adani enterprises close to 2000 rupees should one still uh, continue to buy so as i said uh, until this issue is not resolved adani you know new 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 money should not be poured in but mm-hmm. i believe that there is a good chance for a 30% upside from current levels all right understood that as well um uh, avinash uh, there are some uh, fresh comments also coming in let me read that out uh, as well chief justice of india has said the report of the justice sapre uh, is submitted in the supreme court registry we are keeping this matter on monday now and we will pronounce order on monday on your application we need to uh, read the report which we will do it over the weekend as well so p- apparently uh, the six member uh, committee report has already been submitted they are saying they are um, uh, talking about how justice sapre has submitted the report 
in the Supreme Court registry and now the matter will be now taken up on Monday. So status quo so far, Monday is when we meet next uh, to see what exactly uh, the court really says. Uh, so over the weekend, it's going to be again, um, you know, a situation of a wait and watch, right Avinash? Yeah, I think it would be a wait and watch and interestingly, Sakshi, it comes on Monday because as I mentioned to you, uh, Monday the market could also react to the state yeah. election results in Karnataka. Yes, absolutely. So two very, very important uh, updates uh, that we will be getting at over here to Vineet. Your own thoughts as well. Uh, the matter now postponed for Monday and we will be updating, uh, you know, awaiting the order as well on the Supreme Court. Perhaps more clarity emerging on Monday and before investors should really understand what exactly they should be doing. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we are going to get a little more, uh, you know, peep into what the uh, proponents of this case have been uh, putting out and what are the findings. So that is definitely uh, going to be a factor which could impact the stock price going on Monday. So it will be interesting to watch out what happens. All right, understood that. Well, thank you so much, Abhinash. And thank you so much, uh, Vineet, for being with us on the show and discussing with us uh, what could these, uh, you know, uh, statements from the Supreme Court really mean for Adani Group and the way investors should be approaching their investments in both uh, in the group stocks, in fact. Uh, but definitely looks like we will uh, get back to this discussion on Monday to understand what exactly uh, should be the strategy, the order that will be pronounced by the court on Monday as well. Until then, our status quo and the market will react to both Karnataka elections and the Adani group and what uh, exactly really comes out from this court order as well. Uh, with that, we will wrap up this edition. Many thanks for being with us on to this show to understand what exactly should be your own approach to these talks and developments as far as the jurisdiction is also concerned. Many thanks for being with us. Startups which revolutionized food delivery in India. Linking restaurants to customers, becoming generic names in the process. But Swiggy and Zomato have their own competition now. Competition which threatens to erode their margins, uncut their offers and wean away customers who have become so dependent on their services. The mega disruptor is ONDC a government-led digital superhighway for small retailers to reach their customers without having to pay middlemen or increase costs by giving commissions to third parties. Several food brands have already onboarded the ONDC platform. Interestingly, it was customers who discovered the huge price advantage ONDC is offering. This Twitter user pointed out how a McDonald's burger was 60% cheaper if ordered via ONDC. Another user also ordered from the fast food brand and found not only was the bill lower, but ONDC was not charging for delivery. A customer in Vizag also tweeted the advantages of ONDC after ordering food via the government-owned platform. ONDC in that journey is to disaggregate e-commerce and allow small suppliers or even big suppliers like Nestle uh, and small merchants to be on the grid. And there are two interesting use cases that have been launched in the last one month, which I'll just take a minute. One is called PIN code. PIN code is launched by PhonePay. Yeah. And it's a hyper-local commerce product, which essentially acts as an aggregation and coordination layer on top of small retailers. Another is something called Namma Yatri, which is making changing mobility where you can order an auto rickshaw and then you pay directly to the auto guy without paying any platform in between. Business Today TV took a look at the prices and discounts being offered by restaurants listed on ONDC platform against those on the Swiggy and Zomato apps. The entire Taco Bell menu was at 15% discount on ONDC while the other delivery platforms offered maximum discounts up to 120 rupees. Burgers from Wendy's were at 20% discount on ONDC while only Zomato offered a conditional discount of 200 rupees. Barista snacks and beverage were at 28% discount on ONDC with only Zomato offering much smaller discount.
crispy creme donuts had a flat 8% discount on ONDC while the other delivery platforms had smaller offers. However, the reach of ONDC is still a fraction of the market Swiggy and Zomato service. It has 29,000 sellers with more than 3.5 million products listed, ranging from food to clothes, cab rides to movie tickets and groceries to electronics. Where ONDC has a leg up on Swiggy and Zomato is delivery charges and commission. Currently, ONDC charges commissions which are half that of the other delivery apps, enabling restaurants to give larger discounts and in some cases absorb delivery charges as well. What also sets ONDC apart from Swiggy and Zomato is its willingness to share user data with restaurants. This has been a sticking point for restaurants who have accused aggregators of not sharing names, addresses and phone numbers of customers. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. I'm informed by the Financial Services Commission that it has taken note of the contents of the report published by Heidelberg Research in January 2023, as well as other information pertaining to this matter, wherein specific reference has been made to inter alia, creation of offshore shell companies in Mauritius, the UAE, and the Caribbean islands. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the outset, I wish to inform the House that the allegations of the presence of shell companies in Mauritius are false and baseless. According to the law, shell companies are not allowed in Mauritius or global business companies licensed by the Financial Services Commission have to meet substance requirements on an ongoing basis as per Section 21 of the Financial Services Act and are being strictly monitored by the Commission. In fact, in order to meet the substance requirements, all global business companies have to first carry out their core income generating activities in or from Mauritius as required and under the Income Tax Act. Second, be managed and controlled by, from Mauritius. Third, be administered by a management company. Fourth, have at least two directors resident in Mauritius of sufficient caliber to exercise independence of mind and judgment. Fifth, maintain at all times their principal bank account in Mauritius. Six, keep and maintain at all times their accounting records at their registered office in Mauritius. Seven, prepare their statutory financial statements and cause those financial statements to be audited in Mauritius. And eight, provide for meetings of directors to include at least two directors from Mauritius. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. And I say this to a, with a lot of business people in the room. I think we need to stop looking for a China fix. That Indian growth cannot be built on Chinese efficiency. Uh, that ultimately, uh, you know, if we are uh, really to, to sustain and uh, uh, take the economy to a different level, we have to create the kind of domestic vendor change that a serious manufacturing economy will do. Uh, I know that it is not something which will happen overnight, uh, but I can tell you uh, as uh, someone in the government today, someone in the, uh, in the, uh, the economic uh, um, affairs uh, uh, cabinet committee, we take as a priority today that how do you build today the deep manufacturing uh, 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 the deep manufacturing supply chains if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe
Have you been getting unknown calls from international numbers on WhatsApp? Well, then you need to caution because these calls you should not even think of answering at all. Getting calls from numbers that start with plus six, seven, plus four, one or any international code that you do not recognize, it's not safe to answer them because these are scam callers. Now, scam calls are a form of fraud where criminals attempt to trick people into giving them money or even personal information. But what's gotten worse is that now you don't even have to answer these calls. They simply get away with a missed call. These calls can take many forms including fake tech support calls, phishing scams, robocalls and the latest one being AI generated missed calls. The minute you answer, the, answer these calls or even if you don't, all the data stored on your phone or cloud becomes immediately vulnerable. The data could range from your Aadhaar PAN details and biometrics to save debit card and credit card information. In recent years, we've seen a significant increase in the number of scam calls reported by individuals and businesses alike. There are several factors that have contributed to this rise, including technology advancements, changes in consumer behavior, and the ease with which scam callers can operate across international borders. Well, international borders, these scams have now moved, uh, moved away from just Jamtara. According to a report by local circles, based on a survey, it was revealed that about 64% of Indians get about three to four spam calls every single day. The survey also found that about 95% of these individuals who have registered their numbers with Tri's DND list still continue to receive the spam or scam calls. Yet another report titled Global Spam Report 2021, True Caller, had ranked India as the fourth most affected country by spam calls. But why is that? Why are we so vulnerable? I spoke with a cybersecurity expert, Mr. Amit Dube. Thank you so much for joining, Mr. Amit Dubey. I'm going to start by asking that what are these kinds of scams that we're coming across? Even if you answer the call or you don't, your data is still very vulnerable. So how would you suggest that we safeguard our data? You need to do three settings in your WhatsApp. First, you should uh, uh, disable. Uh, there's a feature in WhatsApp that uh, you can block any call which is coming through unknown numbers. So if you have not saved that number in your phone book, if it is not in your contact list and if you be targeted through those numbers, it will automatically block. So you can go to your WhatsApp settings and you can block those numbers. There is a possibility. India is the fourth most affected country by scam or spam calls. 64% of Indians get three spam calls daily. So where do the scammers get your phone number from? That's one question that everyone wonders after they get such a call. The answer is slightly more complex than we think. It starts from the time you sign up onto a website or share your phone number at a store in order to avail promotional offers or deals. Your data gets stored on the company's database. Given the weak tech infrastructure and missing laws to protect this data, a scammer can easily access your data. Remember when Domino's India had a data breach? The scammers were able to get data of over 18 crore people. And there have been so many other attacks over the past couple of years. In terms of cyber attacks and data breaches, India is ranked the second most vulnerable country in the APAC region, according to a Polo Ultra report. In the event of rising calls and data breaches, a data protection law is the need of the hour. Proposed for a couple of years now, the data protection bill is all set to be tabled in the monsoon session of the parliament. This bill will potentially safeguard data and that will take down the scams. But in the meantime, make sure you protect your data by enabling all the settings that we just discussed. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and with me today is N.S. Venkatesh, the Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Mutual Funds uh, Industry of India. Amphi, welcome to, uh, uh, to BTTV, Mr. Venkatesh. I want you to begin by telling our viewers about the latest data as far as uh, inflows uh, into the mutual fund sector uh, in the reporting month of April. Thanks, Siddharth. Yeah, essentially, we are looking at it. Uh, the flows have been reasonably okay in the sense that the net net flows for this month is around 1,21,000 crore. Uh, the AUM 